Hello, here I am again, Dr. Ben Holcomb at the School of Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering in the Faculty of Engineering and IT at UTS. I've now, um, I'm recording the third video of this series of videos now uh, about laser torsional vibrometry. Um, we will remember that we have a dual beam laser vibrometer here, which measures angular vibration. One important type of angular vibration of which is torsional vibration. So previously I explained um, or demonstrated the measurement of angular vibration with this experimental setup and we were able to, using that, determine the sensitivity of the instrument to angular vibration. And now that we have that sensitivity in radians per second per volt, we are able to apply that to the measurement of torsional vibration. Here I have now a rotating wheel and I can control the mean speed of this rotating wheel independently to any torsional vibration that I apply. So I can increase the, the, the rotational speed using this controller over here. Okay, so as I adjust that potentiometer, I can adjust the speed of the wheel. And I can also apply a sinusoidal or any type of uh, torsional vibration signal. In this case, I'll use a sinusoid with 100 hertz and one volt peak to peak by turning on this signal generator output here, which is essentially the same as I have on the oscilloscope, but a, a separate dedicated box. And now you can see I have a measurement of torsional vibration on my green trace here and again my angular vibration level is approximately three divisions so I have 1.5 volts of torsional vibration. Again as before I have the square cross section as well as the circular cross section if I move the laser beams across to the square cross section I can show you that there is no sensitivity to shape cross-section and that's a very powerful uh, aspect of laser torsional vibration so that's the square cross-section presently moved to the circular cross-section you can see exactly the same type of signal in addition to that I've also connected this shaker to my power amplifier that I was using before I'm still generating a 25 Hertz signal from the oscilloscope this yellow trace now is going to become my translational vibration. I can again turn on the power amplifier here using my gain control. That will yield or deliver some, some translational vibration. So you probably can't quite see in the video but if I reduce the frequency you certainly will be able to So if I make the frequency very low, 10 hertz, you can now definitely see that translational vibration. Increase that back to the 25 hertz that we were using before. And importantly, there's no sensitivity. You can see my torsional vibration signal is exactly as it was before. Indeed, if I change the amplitude of the signal, the translational velocity signal, I can make this a very high signal level. Can adjust the frequency and once the system settles you can see that the torsional vibration that we're measuring with the laser torsional vibrometer is exactly as it was before that's because the Doppler shift that occurs as a result of the translational vibration is the same for each of the two laser beams and the measurement works by taking a difference of the Doppler shift on those two laser beams inside the interferometer which is within the instrument and this is the part of the instrument sensor head over here and when we subtract the Doppler shift from one beam from the, sub from the Doppler shift from the other clearly a translational velocity component is, is eliminated. Now you have all the information you need to be able to complete the second part of this laboratory exercise.